Well, thank you, Ron, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's certainly a pleasure to be here in this uh, beautiful city with, um, I hear it rains here all the time, but it, it certainly hasn't so far uh, we've been here. Um, well, thank you, Ron, for inviting us here uh, this morning, and uh, uh, this uh, conference is uh, becoming a very significant uh, conference. Um, as you said earlier, the collision of web and geo, I think I like to think of it more as the synergistic merger of web and geo rather than a collision. Um, it's, um, it's certainly uh, something that I think is, is important uh, to discuss, how we actually build a geographic infrastructure, uh, whether we call it GIS infrastructure or geospatial infrastructure or, or uh, 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 any, any, any name we give it. Um, it really means uh, connecting people together through geography and the web. Um, the web is, is really a, a new medium. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, the biggest change since the printing press in our society. Uh, we look back over the millennia at the major events that have uh, changed human history. Uh, no question that the creation of the internet will will actually um, be right up there. In fact, may probably well beyond the, the printing press uh, because it's had such a huge impact in such a short period of time. Um, the World Wide Web, uh, as we know it today, uh, really only emerged in the mid-90s, uh, just a little over a decade ago. It's just shocking when we see the changes. Uh, geography, on the other hand, is a centuries, even millennia old um, science that um, to some extent, I think, had plateaued before computers came along. Um, it, uh, it, it is now uh, revived dramatically, uh, particularly in the form of geographic information systems. So if we look back at um, what geography has been over the centuries, uh, it's been a framework uh, for organizing ourselves. We organize our countries, our empires, uh, our own activities, uh, whether it's uh, farming or fishing or uh, all the traditional professions and new professions, geography plays a huge impact on uh, how we behave as, as people. Uh, Jared Diamond in his book, uh, Guns, Germs, and Steel, who um, some of you I'm sure have read, uh, lays out a very, very strong case for geography being the key factor in how societies emerge, uh, far, far beyond any other factor. Um, his uh, latest book uh, called Collapse, um, about how societies choose to succeed or fail really is about um, um, taking um, the geography of a, of a civilization and um, uh, exploiting that geography too much and uh, resulting in collapse. And there's some lessons to be learned for us there. I think that's one of the important roles that we play uh, as, as geo people uh, in being able to communicate uh, a message uh, to the, the world that, um, that things need to change. Because our world is changing very, very rapidly. Um, it's unbelievable how fast things are changing. Uh, I, I look back at the, we're, we're actually almost at the end of the, um, the first decade of the 21st century. And it just seems when I look back at 1998, uh, everything has changed radically. Uh, the world's political situation, the awareness of uh, climate change, uh, the uh, energy, uh, soaring energy prices, soaring food prices. I grew up on a farm in southern Ontario, and I left the farm uh, back in 1970. And uh, uh, I decided I didn't want to milk cows for the rest of my life. My brother took, a, took it over, and he milks the cows. But at, uh, at that time, agricultural prices were, were pretty low, and they've been depressed for a long, long time. In real dollar terms, they, they just got lower and lower and lower. Partly it was efficiency. Partly it was a surplus caused by uh, over-exploitation of land through intensive fertilization, monocropping, all kinds of other things. And that's come back to bite us enormously in the last year. Uh, wheat is, uh, is soared to multiple times what it was just a year ago. So we have all of these enormous uh, problems uh, that, um, that uh, we have to deal with, and they're hitting us um, all, all at the same time. A financial crisis, an energy crisis, a food crisis, a climate change crisis. So what are we going to do about what are we going to do about this? Well, I think geographic information systems, uh, uh, geospatial data, uh, the geo web, uh, play a very important role in helping us see the whole. 
how, how do we bring together all that complex data and all that knowledge and see it in a more holistic way? How do we make it accessible to people so they can make decisions? Uh, Peter talked about them having um, a computer in front of them, a screen in front of them that shows the detail of uh, everything that they talk about in council. I remember uh, back in 1985, one of the first, in fact, uh, the first municipality in Canada to um, buy ESRI software, Oxford County. We moved in one of those big three, remember those big three gun people with gray hair? Remember those big projectors with the three guns that took about an hour to align and set up? Set that up in council and the first meeting, there was a big discussion about should they sell this piece of land the county owned? It was a deal lighting on a, on a corner. It was uh, three or four acres of land and the discussion raged, so somebody said, well, why don't we ask the system? We just got it here yesterday. So they went in and looked at the system and brought the thing up and showed all county-owned land. And the councillor said, oh, we own all this land? They said, yeah, yeah, we are a big landowner. Well, why do we want to sell this? <laughs> it might go up in price. So they decided not to sell it. And the debate before had been how much should they sell it for? So the, really what geography does for us is integrates all these different disciplines together that have to make decisions. Uh, dis organizations, bring those organizations together and the activities that they're performing. GIS is becoming very widespread. Uh, there are hundreds of thousands of organizations around the world now using GIS to integrate um, the way they work into the world. And there's a, here's a list of applications that uh, just a, a, it's really just a small list. Uh, it's remarkable. Uh, the number of applications of GIS that exist. Uh, planning. This is what probably one of the earliest uses of, uh, of GIS uh, was in, in planning, and it continues to be. Um, I'm not a planner, so I, can, uh, I, can, I shouldn't be critical of planners because they, they really um, have a, a difficult time uh, with uh, all the pressures that are on them in designing our urban spaces because some of them are so, cities have become so big they're really not designable. They just happen. It's a, almost like an organic thing. But you, know, you can, you can you know, apply pressures here and there and, and they certainly haven't done a good job in the last, in many cities. Vancouver actually being one of the surprising exceptions and without freeways and much higher density. But you look at uh, Toronto, the sprawl is unbelievable. It's becoming, a, it's becoming an unsustainable city. Uh, and, and urban planning is, is really desperately needs, planning in general desperately needs a more holistic view of the world. Uh, this uh, map at the top here of the uh, Oak Ridges of Moraine, a vast green space that was put in place by the Ontario government over, the, over a lot of developers' um, uh, protests, uh, was the result of, um, of uh, several years, in fact many years of geographic analysis at looking what should be preserved. The amount of data that was pulled together for that is remarkable. Uh, the surprising part is that it took so many years to make, make the decision. Uh, I think as we move forward with geography and the web together, the accessibility of information needed to make that decision will actually be, uh, will make those decisions happen much faster. In a more micro scale, uh, the, the NIMBY means that you have to do an incredible amount of work in bringing new change to the urban space. Um, there's a, an interesting organization, um, the Orton Foundation uh, in Vermont uh, was uh, fighting a Walmart in their small town where their headquarters were, and they went and developed this piece of technology called Community Viz, which uh, looks at a more holistic way at how you, um, a community works. And it's actually models. It says if we put this development in, uh, what will be the impact on the water? What will be the impact on the sewer? What will be the impact on the roads? And these little bar charts go up and down as you make changes to the urban space and at the same time visualize it. Uh, one of the biggest challenges in using this is accessibility to data. How do you get connected to the data? It has to, it's not, has to, not all in the right format, not all in the right uh, structure uh, to be able to support community viz. But for me, community viz is a little glimpse into the future of what the geo web will actually bring us. A lot of discussion um, in the papers, uh, in the, reading the abstracts on uh, BIM, uh, building information uh, model. Um, uh, building modeling is becoming uh, more important, uh, particularly as people start using their little Blackberries or iPhones or whatever device they have as personal navigation devices. Um, you'll need to get inside the building. Uh, this slide actually here is uh, not a BIM model, it's actually showing emergency exits. Uh, how do you